Okay, okay, let's start with the Kano theory. So, as we all know, when we say Kano theory, it denotes teamwork. Okay, so of course, in a team, there must be a leader. So, the leader's role is to develop his group to work as a team. By the definition, a team must share a common mission and, of course, vision established operating policies, and must have an excellent communication skills. He know how to relay instructions from all to all his subordinates. Great leaders must have a strong people skills as well as organizational skills to ensure their teams succeed. So the role of the leader is to keep everyone on track to achieve collective success. Diba? Kami yung teamwork is the ability to work together toward a common vision. The ability to direct individual accomplishments toward organizational objectives. It is the fuel that allows common people to attain uncommon results. Mauna si Jai kanang more about kind of okay let's talk about the book of good to great so in the book of good to great by jim collins he talked about level five leaderships this means that the complete ingredients of a level five leadership is the humility and will the humility of the leader and his will to perform his task. When we say humility, that he must be humble enough to perform his job. He must humble enough to accept his responsibilities as a leader. And of course, he must have the will to perform all his tasks for the good of the organizations. So how about the first who, then what? When we say first who, then what leadership, we need to think that we have to get the right people in the right place. You need to hire individual in which you need the most. It is not that that you hire individual because you know him. You hire that individual because you have a debt of gratitude to him. It is not that way. Therefore, it is very important that you get the right people to enter into the bus so that you'll be able to know where to go. Make sure that you have the right people in the organizations to carry out the operations perfectly. first How about the confront the brutal facts? So in this, uh, in this uh, management theory, this refers to a good leader must have to work together with his subordinates with a good intentions to perform great things, okay? So, leader must understand the realities of their organization. Leadership does not begin with just a vision or mission alone. But you need to work for that mission. You have to work for that vision by compiling and searching for more strategies and techniques so that you will be able to understand, you must have to know the brutal facts that the organization is there for you to lead, to prosper, and to grow. Okay? How about this hedgehog concepts? This hedgehog concept, you need to identify what would, uh, identify one of the core values propositions in your organizations. And after identifying that core values in your organizations wherein you can do well, you can generate more profit for that particular value, that would be the time that you have to focus on that particular value. Focus where the company can do well. That is a hedgehog concept. How about a culture of discipline? So, why is it that discipline is very important in the organizations or even to the individuals? Diba? 
Discipline is important for individuals to behave properly in the workplace. If you cannot behave properly in the workplace, if you don't know how, if you don't know what would be your responsibilities, if you don't have the idea that you are placed there in order to meet the company's expectations, there's nothing will happen. So, in a culture of discipline, there must be an operating freedom within the framework of responsibilities. It is you employees, it is you individuals, it is you leader who must maintain or who must have to, to know or to be aware with the discipline and must have to understand your behavior that you need to apply for your responsibilities. So that you will create greatness, okay? So, meaning the culture of discipline is uh, not just a, uh, it's not just a principle of business, but it is a principle of greatness, okay? So, technology accelerators. So, when we come out, when we say, when we hear the word technology, it's more about the, the modern the modern one that the company must operate the the highly kanang highly operated machines the purely computerized transactions the 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 the, the, the computerized systems and etc but you need to understand that you have to use technology as an accelerator of momentum not a creator of it. You, you have to use your actually in order to accelerate for the good. And that particular, there is accelerations of momentum that even if you have to reach the highest pedestal, still you need to strive to move higher and higher. Okay, so what would be the best thing in order for you to accelerate with that particular technology? Of course, you must have to place talented people who have the full knowledge about your business and you have to to provide mentoring on that particular people even if you hire them because you know that he or she has the skills that you need for the success of your operations still you need to mentor as a leader for the particular people in order for him or for her to continue to grow Okay, so you need to respond to technological change with thoughtfulness and creativity. How about the fly whale and the doom loop? The when you say fly whale, it means to say it is a management type wherein you have to push, pushing for a great effort. You keep on pushing until you completed your goal. You, you keep on trying, even if it is little by little until such time that you will be able to reach or to achieve your goal for your company. And when we say the doom loop, if this is the downside of the business, there is, when we understand that there's a slowdown of the business, of course, as a management, you need to shift for strategies if this cons uh, consistently uh, result a poor output if that would be the case you need to to look for another strategies to look for other technique so that you will be able to to achieve or you will be able to cure what would be the defect okay so there are two kinds of organizations the private organizations and the public organizations so we understand that, of course, an organization has a purpose. What will be the purpose why you exist, why you established a business? The purpose of the private organizations and the public organizations is, of course, somewhat like very different from each other because the public organizations, they want to serve the public well, whereas the private organizations, they want to serve the stakeholder with regards to their products and services to make them more fulfilled because as an organization, it is not just right that you think about on how you 
gather a profit on how you how you're going to have or to to make your business grow and grow but still you have the social responsibilities of course okay how about the goals of course a private organization has its own goals and a public organization has its own goals dependency type and the most important one but the most difficult job to perform is the decision making why is it so why decision making is considered as the most difficult job for an organization considering the fact that when you decide something you cannot retract it back what will be the effect what will be the result of your decisions is somewhat like very critical what if if you made the wrong decision what if if the decision just need to be streamlined this need to be corrected okay so of course that will be the time that you have to look for the remedy and of course you need to identify your key stakeholders who are the people who patronize your business who are the people who support your business in general okay so what are the features of successful strategic management so atong makita uh, a successful strategic management has support of organization's executive officer of course this from the top is users friendly everybody must have to accept the kind of strategic management that it is easy for them to perform it's participatory no left to planners of course and it's flexible flexible in the sense that it should be uh it, it can be easily be could be uh flexible capable of being flex okay so there's a, a yielding to influence in that case so lead to resources decisions engages and motivates all staff of course is fresh and continuous not static and stale it should be in the trends uh, not outdated okay is proactive meaning to say that the management has the acting and participations for future problems needs and changes how about not a quick fix so music not a quick fix of course there is no permanent or no long lasting solution that will be easy to achieve and then part of quality management when we say part of quality management that there is a quality planning quality assurance quality control and quality improvement and how about the pips increase over time of course the the payoffs or the company must have to increase every now and then so what is, what are the lessons learned about strategic planning you may wonder plans must be tailored to organization no one size fits all time to complete take longer expect 50 percent more than planned process needs a shift visionaries need at the beginning and detailed types thereafter so we can learn that in a strategic pl planning you need to set the overall goals for your business and to develop a plan to achieve them you must have to identify what would be your priorities you must have to understand how you get involved with their day-to-day -day operations and you need to ask every now and then where your business is headed so that's from strategic planning what do you think why monitors don't plan okay lagi ko no it's time consuming high demands not rewarded executive don't support it to risky if this would be the concepts of the manager maybe he already knows that there is no proper support from the top management yes it's true that the plan is time consuming but if it is not only him who plan if there is a teamwork on doing the planning of course you can easily make it even if it is time consuming but if the 
are many people who support with it, still you can perform it. Of course, high demands not rewarded. Okay, let's go to the strategic management model. There is what we call strategic formulation. Of course, it include where do we want to be. So you must have to know kung asa ka pa ang imong uh, strategy. Of course, there must be a vision, mission, values, the goals, and the objectives. So kung sa yung vision, may ganit ang vision, the vision without action is a daydream. Action without vision is a nightmare. Diba? So, how, we can say how important is the visions. It is not just only a mere rage and praises, but there must be accompanied with a strategies and technique on how you're going to fulfill or how you're going to materialize that vision. So this must be accompanied with an actions, played with a plan and implementations. So this is not optional, but vision is necessary that's stretched for 30 years or more. It should be 8 to 10 rays in length, future state, brief and memorable. Why well, it could be brief and memorable so that to the workers in that particular organization, they will have to inject what would be their vision, what would be their contributions so that they may be able to achieve what is the vision of that organization. It should be inspiring and challenging, descriptive of the ideal. Inspiring in the sense that you need to work hard for it because you believe that it is not just only the company will grow, but also the worker or employees itself. Challenging is because when you achieve that particular vision, when you perform that particular vision, it is somewhat like that you feel that you are in the highest pedestal. It is somewhat like that you achieve something because you done it well. And it could be descriptive of the ideal because it should be based on somewhat like a vision that can be measurable. It is ideal because that's the trends, that's the needs of the community, the people and the stakeholders. It should be accompanied with that. So vision example is light the fire within a safer future for all communities. See the mountains breathe freely to be the happiest place on earth, to be the world's best quick service restaurants. It, it, it start with this appraise. Right? So mean got to be the world's best quick service restaurant. I mean to say if you achieve a particular vision, there is a fulfillment on the part of the worker. You must be proud of because what is in your visions is come into reality. So vision levels of people, some people never see it. That is why they are not able to achieve what goals they set for themselves because they forget to see the vision levels. Then some people see it but never pursue it on their own. They take it for granted. Some people see it and pursue it at the achiever. Some people see it and pursue it and help others see it. That's a leader. This according to John Maxwell, developing the leader within you as of 1993. It's a good idea. Then we have a mission statement in the absence of clearly defined direction one is forced to concentrate on confusions that will ultimately consume you. Why you are there? Why we need to establish these particular organizations? Why I need to work for that particular organization? Because you have the mission. It is not just to feed yourself. It is not just to feed your family. It is not just to serve the public, but it is there to perform your responsibilities, your social responsibility something like this so missions must regard what is the purpose describe this 
current state timeline is three to five years of course you, it must be three to five years after you fulfill that particular mission you have to revise and do another mission so on and so forth and you need to build on a distinctive competencies trying to focus on core business and it should be 30 to 35 words in length not too many because this will uh, somewhat like uh, uh, not memorable or parang di na ni mo ma kuha ang unsay purpose nga nung naakadiha ang taas na kaadyo di na ni mo matiman ang udali mission example to lead all communities in disaster preparedness mitigations and recovery by maximizing assistance and support okay you have to read this particular missions uh, missions is uh, look like this somewhat like berry uh, inspiring somewhat like a head turner somewhat like you, it, it give you the nerve to work hard and hard because of that particular mission so there's a corporate governance what it is the code of governance the role of board directors the role of chat management team the executive compensations system by which a prime's owner controls its affair and the corporate governance is the one to ask, does it work? Does the purpose that you are here has been performed? Something like this. So my code of governance, my category code, the surveillance Oxley Act, diba? Sa una mong gipa, gipa research, what is the surveillance Oxley Act? And then some of this, you have to read it one by one. The role of board of directors, of course, they have to monitor if the company is on the right track, if the people is performing their job well. Evaluate and influence. We need to evaluate how far with our performance. We have to evaluate if we are really achieving the goals, we are achieving what has been stated in the mission, and you have to act as a leader. You have to perform good acts so that you will be able to influence others in the organizations of course you will be the first one to initiate the best thing for the organizations and determine what is the best for the people and the organizations what is the best for the organizations in general and to the workers in particular then organization of oh boy there must be insiders versus outsiders the chief executive officer or the ceo or the chair of persons where there is a need to have an organization of oh boy so that they will be the one who watch over the activities of the lower level and there must be the committee's effectiveness the committee of ways and means the committee of procurement the community of the uh, committee of supply and chain, something like this. And this is very important for the organizations, for them to understand what would be their purpose. What's the role of top management team? Who is the top management? Executive leaders and strategic vision articulate strategic vision for corporation, sets the model for other to identify and follow, communicates high performance standards, and build confidence in followers' abilities to meet the particular standards. And that is very important that there is a standard as a measurement on where to go. Managing strategic planning process, this is very important that there must be a management on the part of strategic planning. It is just only a simple plan because when you plan, there is still a need to 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 have an alternatives before you have to finalize your plan. Then executive compensations, of course, the incentive alignment. If you hit the goal, how much percentage with regards to your incentive? The executive ownerships, the stocks, for example, if the company has a uh, as, uh, as, 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 as a stock company or who are the, the executives what would be the rights of executive to own a certain percentage and then the salary that is a motivation for the people in the organizations to, to work just because of the salary but it's the executive who will have to 
understand and to to know what would be the best salary for them and for the people. And of course, there must be a bonus, stock options, the LT bonuses, something like this that would help motivate them and the organization. And then the values, the guiding principles, of course, help establish culture, the culture that us, that company must have to adapt and see to it that it is beneficial to the organization, not detrimental to the organizations. Part of reserving the core in the core ideology, what would be the core that the company must have to maintain and not to break that particular call all throughout. And that is very important that the company has a value itself in order to build goodwill towards the people okay that's an example of company and then ethical awareness there was the organizational ethics individual ethics and fractional values organizational ethics what would be the best thing for the company so that they may be able to build a good reputation so with individual and personal values then strategic management model when it comes to scanning where we are now, we need to have conduct a, a macro analysis, industry analysis, the SWOT analysis, and the internal versus external elements. What is this in this SWOT analysis? We need to understand what will be the strength, the weakness, the uh, somewhat like the opportunities and the uh, threats so nowadays this uh, SWOT analysis is this is long before before and now that we are in the era of technological SWOT analysis is that you are considering what is in the internal organizations before consider uh, before you need to understand the outside organizations more you have to determine your strength and weakness of the company in the inside before you have to understand the opportunities and the threats outside but nowadays that we are now in the era of technological advancement it is very important that you have to consider first what is in the outside that is the threats and the opportunities before going to understand what is in the inside the strength and the weakness therefore the SWOT will change into T-O-W-S or TOWS. And then the internal versus the external elements. But you need to understand what are the things that we need to do in the internal affairs of the organizations before considering the outside. In why scan? This is the reason you need to uh, read all this, why we need to scan. And then, monetary scanning key environmental variables you have to read, and then the social cultural variables. Of course, there's a life changes, career expectations, until increase in temporary workers. All these are can be self-explanatory. Okay.